I'll start off by saying, feel free to disagree with me in this video and let me know in the comments down below what your stance is on all of this. But I'll be explaining today why I think this notion around always having 60B of headroom, around always fussing around gain staging, is somewhat BS if you're working digitally, meaning making music in a DAW with plugins and audio and not analog gear. First, let's explain what all these different things mean before I explain why it doesn't really matter. So what is clipping or redlining in music? Clipping is when your waveform or audio starts to distort and produce artifacts when it exceeds its maximum capability. On analog systems, this could be an amplifier which has increased its volume but reached its maximum capabilities and as a result distorts. When your DAW goes over the 0 dB or decibel mark, it will be too loud for the system to handle and your track will start to clip, but only at 24 bit. Bit depth is basically how detailed your audio signal is or how many different possible amplitudes there are. And this has the effect on clipping that 24-bit depth has a specific dynamic range that will begin to clip above 0 dB. But your DAW uses an internal bit depth of minimum 32-bit, could be more. 32-bit has a larger range of amplitudes, and the key is that you can still represent values above 0 decibels without losing signal and without introducing artifacts. And I can show you this by bouncing an entire track out. So this is a track that I made in an hour for a sample flip challenge that I hosted inside my community. If you're interested in that, it'll be linked up below. I've turned off the plugins on the master, and you can actually see on the volume meter here that the track will be clipping in certain areas. It sounds like this though. As you can hear, there isn't any distortion or any artifacts going on, despite the track being in the red loads of different places. And this is because, like I mentioned, the DAW is running at 32-bit. We know that the track is in the red, so let's bounce it out. When I export or bounce anything, I can get the option between different bit depths, as you can see right here. If I choose 24-bit, we'll get clipping in the bounced out audio, and this is because everything above 0 dB will be cut off. But with 32-bit, or floating point, everything that's floating above the 0 dB mark will still be retained. And we can just turn that down afterwards and we won't hear any clipping. So let's bounce it out at 24 and 32 bits so you can see a difference. So now I've bounced that section out and we got this one in 24 and this one in 32. And let's zoom in on the points where it actually goes above the 0 dB. You can for example see it both here and here where the track kind of gets squared off at the top. This means that the track is going above 0 dB. By going here, I can turn the volume of the waveform up and down. If we turn down the volume of the 24 bit, you can see that everything above 0 dB is still cut off. You can see that it still has that squared off thing that the line goes completely straight around here. But if we turn down the volume, you can see that these lines here suddenly don't become straight anymore because the signal above 0 dB is still retained. You see? No straight lines here. So why is this significant when it comes to headroom? Well, like I mentioned earlier, there's this notion that you need 6 dB of headroom before mastering. But because of 32-bit, the signal isn't lost above 0 dB. To get the 6 dB, if your track is in the red, all you have to do is, before your master chain, add a volume plugin and turn the volume down. Because remember, if your track is in the red, the signal is still there above 0 dB, so you can just turn it down. But even if your master is just in the red, you don't necessarily need the 6 dB of headroom. Personally, I don't even have the 6 dB of headroom. My track is usually in the red before the master chain. As long as there aren't any artifacts or distortion on my track, I don't care that my track is redlining because I usually just have a limiter on my master and anything above the 0 dB just acts as extra input gain. So you only really want the 6 dB of headroom if you're going to use plugins like analog emulations that you know might actually start to clip if your track is above 0 dB. And if you're sending your track over to a mastering engineer who needs the 6 dB of headroom, all you have to do is export your track with slightly lower volume on the master. You don't need to go in and gain stage every single track to make sure that every single track is below 0 dB. Because the signal isn't lost, you can just turn it down. For releases, you should bounce at 24-bit because it's best for distribution. So just use a limiter and get everything below 0 dB so you don't get any artifacts. But if you're bouncing anything else like stems, always use 32-bit. I'm ready for the heat in the comments, especially towards my approach to mastering, which is so alternative. But I really don't care about these super technical aspects of audio engineering. I just want to produce music that I think actually sounds good instead of being technically correct. This principle just makes the process of production easier and more enjoyable in my opinion. And it allows you to spend less time worrying about gain staging unless there's actual audible distortion going on. I just go by feeling. Most times my tracks are slightly in the red, but as long as there's no artifacts, I couldn't care less. But this is just my approach to music. You don't have to do it the same if you disagree. Take care guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.